overwhelmingly the vast majority of the Muslim organizations inside the United States are affiliated with terrorist groups overseas. The enemy has been very bold in telling us what they want to do. They literally want to take over our country. They stockpiled weapons, they stockpiled explosives, they targeted Hindus, they targeted Jews, they targeted other Muslims, they targeted Christians, they terrorized. They each kept their own log of their commando training, whether it's map reading, uh, firearms, uh, surveillance, stalking, whatever. They were responsible for fire bombings and murder. In the United States, a radical Pakistani cleric is setting up Islamic warfare training camps in the backyards of America. The cleric's name is Sheikh Mubarak Ali Jalani. Law enforcement claims Sheikh Jalani is an international terrorist who controls 35 Islamic communes spread across 22 American states. In Pakistan, Sheikh Jalani calls his Islamic terror organization Jamaat al-Fukra. In the United States, his organization is known as Muslims of America. The U.S. State Department says Jamaat al-Fukra is an Islamic sect that seeks to purify Islam through violence. United States State Department reports Fukra members have purchased isolated compounds in rural America. More alarmingly, Homeland Security reports predicted sponsors of attacks include Jamaat al Fukra, a Pakistani based group that has been linked to Muslims of America. Fukra members in the United States have been convicted of criminal violations, including murder and fraud, U.S. State Department. Essentially, we have a fifth column movement in the United States uh, that is uh, criminal in nature, criminal in background, and criminal in future intent with a religious mission that's been retrofitted onto them. It's very, very dangerous, very, very insidious organization operating here throughout the United States. Sheikh Jalani exhorts his followers with this poem. Come join our troops and army, says our Sheikh Jalani. Prepare to sacrifice your head. A true believer is never dead. Say victory is in the air. The Kafir's blood will not be spared. And uh, having won an organization so boldly and outrageously supportive of, uh, of the violent overthrow of the United States and our way of life and our, and our religious and social heritage, operating within the United States in plain sight is an abomination and is definitely a, a failure of the United States government to act in its own interest. Sheikh Jalani claims he has between 10,000 and 15,000 Muslim followers in America with a presence in 22 American states. In his book, The Pillar of Lies, Sheikh Jalani says, these are the end times. Time is shrinking and like a carpet, it is being rolled up. In Colorado, law enforcement authorities found this pledge given by Fuqa members to Sheikh Mubarak Jalani. I shall always hear and obey and whenever given the command, I shall readily fight for Allah's sake.
be. Period. Don't say another word. Understand? Okay, get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Okay, now just go. Come up here anytime you want to. We can spread this dagger a lot. Get the camera. Now I've got to take the camera. Okay. Get off my hand. Off my I don't camera. Have a get off my camera. Get off my camera. Sheikh Jalani calls his followers soldiers of Allah and says he is establishing guerrilla warfare training camps inside America. I believe there are groups affiliated with Al-Qaeda, groups that are not affiliated with Al-Qaeda, but all of whom seek to bring about the destruction of the United States as we know it. And they're here in America, and they're hard at work at bringing about the triumph of Islamofascism. One such group is an organization called Muslims of America, which is also known as Jamaat al-Fukra in Pakistan. Its leader, Sheikh Mubarak Jalani, arrived in America in 1980 and began establishing Islamic warfare training camps throughout the United States. In a secret videotape uncovered by our investigation team, Sheikh Jalani is seen here both recruiting American Muslims and instructing them in Islamic guerrilla warfare tactics. The tape is known as Soldiers of Allah. Sheikh Jelani makes clear that his training video was produced on behalf of Muslims of America. On behalf of the Muslims of America, I present before you a documentary film in helping and training oppressed Muslims. Muslims of America, Sheikh Jelani says, is an international organization called Soldiers of Allah. I'm proud to say and to sit with the, with the colleagues who have been successful in founding an international organization which is called Soldiers of Allah, S-O-A. Joining his international organization, Soldiers of Allah, is simple. Contact Muslims of America. And we are establishing training camps. You can reach us, you know, at the Grand Gulf University offices in upstate New York, or in Canada, or in Michigan, or in South Carolina, or in Pakistan, wherever we are, you can reach us. In his effort to lure American Muslim recruits, Sheikh Jilani promises that his training camps are one of the most advanced in Islamic guerrilla warfare. You are most welcome to we'll join one of our you know, advanced training groups in Islamic military warfare. Though the quality of this video is poor in many places, the training tape clearly teaches Jilani's American followers how to engage in guerrilla warfare. But it's not like this. It's not available and it's not like this. इसको ये भी खोलने की जरूरत नहीं इसका के लिए और हर वक्त वो आप इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं आदमी आजकल तकनीक यही है फिर पिस्तौल मारो ठीक है चीज अगर वो जैसे पॉइंट करते हैं आप दिखाऊंगा The video includes camouflage and stealth Scaling mountains. Subduing enemies. Murdering. 
and guards. Hijacking cars and kidnapping. Here, not only supervising the training, but firing an automatic weapon. Members are also trained in setting off explosives. You know, and they have put in. We'll get it on the other side. Ring me. But the C4 is C3. Each of the effect. The terrorist tape on behalf of Muslims of America instructs Jelani's followers in the United States, act like you are a friend and then kill him just like from the book. Sheikh Jelani first arrived in the United States in the early 1980s. He began recruiting American Muslims into his terrorist organization at a retreat in upstate New York. He then began preaching and recruiting at the al Farouk Mosque in Brooklyn, which law enforcement authorities call the Brooklyn Jihad Office because of its reputation of converting American Muslims into a holy war against perceived infidels. While Jelani was recruiting American Muslims to fight in the holy war against the Soviets in Afghanistan, he also began establishing terrorist training camps inside the United States. CP, who requested to remain anonymous, is one of the country's foremost authorities on Sheikh Jalani's terrorist organization known as Jamaat al-Fukra in Pakistan, but Muslims of America in the United States. This organization has actual terrorist training camps that have existed in this country for 20 years. They have carried out bombings, targeted assassinations, um, they've run uh, drugs, guns, uh, have uh, fraud schemes, and they have terrorist connections. These locations can be used to uh, launch um, attacks, um, surveillance operations, safe houses, um, uh, weapons depots, various things, and, and, and they have been used as such. Few Americans had ever heard of this Islamic Pakistani terrorist, Sheikh Jalani, until the year 2002. That's when Wall Street Journal reporter Daniel Pearl was kidnapped and later beheaded after attempting to arrange an interview with the militant Sheikh at a hotel in Pakistan. Daniel Pearl wanted to question Jelani about his connections to shoe bomber Richard Reed, who attempted to use a chemical substance to blow up American Airlines Flight 63 from Paris to Miami in December 2001. It was alleged by U.S. officials that Reed was one of Sheikh Jelani's followers. Publicly, Sheikh Jelani denies having any responsibility for Daniel Pearl's kidnapping or execution. But if he was responsible, he clearly gives motive for wanting Daniel Pearl dead. On his website, Sheikh Jelani states that Daniel Pearl was part of a government conspiracy. Obviously, Daniel Pearl was to target me and then an assassination team would be sent in to kill me. Sheikh Mubarak Ali Jelani. We all remember the hor horrific incident where uh, Daniel Pearl, the Wall Street Journal reporter, was, uh, was kidnapped and then uh, executed and beheaded on, on, on film and was shown around the world and everybody was horrified by that. Well, it was, he was set up 
in the, in Pakistan, and he was on his way to meet Jelani. And the whole thing was was a setup, and I believe very strongly that Jelani was an integral part of the bait in order to isolate and capture Daniel Pearl, and is in his large part responsible for what happened to him. Now, that if that's not terrorism, what is? Because of its connections uh, directly into Pakistan, because of its connections with uh, Sheikh Jelani, I think he clearly qualifies as a uh, supporter or sympathizer of terrorism. Uh, and by, extra by extrapolation, direct extrapolation, then any organization that he creates or controls should also be considered a terrorist entity. In 2006, the Regional Organized Crime Information Center issued a report funded by the U.S. Department of Justice. The report, marked Restricted to Law Enforcement, exposed how Jelani's followers were conducting paramilitary training inside the United States. Over the past two decades, a terrorist group known as Jamaat al fukra the report states, has been linked to multiple murders, bombings, and various other felonies throughout the United States and Canada. Jelani is now known as an international terrorist, claims the Regional Organized Crime Information Center. He controls more than 35 suspected communes and more than 3,000 members spread across the United States. The communes have one goal, the purification of Islam through violence. In the highly critical law enforcement report, the Regional Organized Crime Information Center says Jelani considers all those who do not follow the tenets of Islam to be his enemies. That members of Jamaat al fukra are known to be Islamic extremists. That his American communes are classically structured terrorist cells. And that Jelani primarily targets American Muslim converts, mostly those with criminal backgrounds. The law enforcement report clearly links Jamaat al fukra to terrorism. It states at least a dozen Jamaat al fukra members have been convicted for terrorist activities, including conspiracy to commit murder, firebombing, and gun smuggling. Jamaat al fukra members are also suspected in 10 unsolved assassinations and 17 firebombings that have occurred since 1980. Jamaat al fukra operated for over a decade in the United States before law enforcement became aware of their terrorist activity or their Islamic guerrilla warfare training camps. But that changed in 1991 with the discovery of a Jamaat al fukra terrorist camp in Buena Vista, Colorado known as Mohammed Commandos of Sector 5. In approximately February 1991, an FBI agent came to my office located in Denver, Colorado. At that point, the agent wanted to meet with my director. He told me and he told the director of my agency that these people were allegedly um, terrorists and uh, they were of a group called the Fukra and they um, actually were led by a man out of Lahore, Pakistan. The investigation into this terrorist camp gave law enforcement authorities a rare glimpse of the guerrilla warfare tactics given to Sheikh Jelani's soldiers of Allah. According to court documents, the Fukur compound was placed under constant police surveillance. It showed various individuals conducting martial arts training, engaging in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and other paramilitary tactical maneuvers and practicing the shooting of assorted firearms and weaponry.
The Fuqua compound also had a storage locker full of explosives and other terrorist material located in Colorado Springs. What they found were approximately 30 pounds of explosives, which were ready to detonate. They found uh, pipe bombs that were ready to detonate. In fact, the CBI was also involved. They actually detonated one of these and it really it blew up a, a car. In addition to explosives, the Fuqua storage locker contained mercury switches for detonating bombs, shape charges, handguns with silencers, pipe bombs, home-cooked plastic explosives, bomb-making instructions, blank birth certificates, fake Colorado driver's licenses, a manual called Guerrilla Warfare, another called Counter-Guerrilla Warfare Operations. There were also targeted silhouettes. One was marked with the words, shooting a hostage, and FBI anti-terrorist team. The FBI also discovered surveillance and reference material to Buckley Air National Guard Base, the Rocky Mountain Arsenal, Warren Air Force Base, and two Wyoming National Guard armories. Uh, they also found, the authorities also found, uh, uh, assassination packages, little targeting packages of uh, saying that uh, these are the orders, basically an order package to actually kill somebody. And in one case, a, uh, one package was found with pictures and, and detailed instructions on how to execute the leader of, a, uh, of, a, of a, an Islamic community center in Tucson. They found uh, a targeting package saying that they, would, they should kill this, uh, this imam so they can take control of this facility. The FBI went and they warned this gentleman about this targeting package. They told him what they found. They showed it to him. It said that this guy is to be murdered in the mosque, in the kitchen of the mosque, after a Friday night service. And she, he's going to be stabbed in a certain way in a certain number of times after services. They warned him. They told him. He says, well, thanks for the warning. You know, I appreciate knowing this but I'm still going to live my life. And within a few months, they found him murdered in the mosque, in the kitchen of the mosque, stabbed the appropriate number of times according to the targeting information that was found in the El Fuqua compound in Colorado. The Colorado Fuqua camp was also responsible for the bombing of a Hare Krishna temple near Denver. That was the, win the windows that the bombs went through. These were um, uh, bombs that were uh, batteries connected to black powder in those cylinders that I explained that were connected to napalm that they threw in here. There were two of them, and they caused over $200,000 worth of damage. Uh, I think from the smell and uh, from the smoke, it was obvious that uh, this was something that was planted. Fortunately, on the other side of this, there's, uh, there were some ceramic tiles that uh, repelled uh, the heat. If we would have known someone was coming with a bomb, we would certainly <laughs> react and do what's necessary. Sheikh Jalani's Fuqua compound, which named itself Muhammad's Commandos of Sector 5, also firebombed a power station in Leesdale, Colorado. The FBI warned Colorado of the terrorists within their state, but according to Susan Fanger, the state's chief investigator, the FBI refused to get involved with shutting the Jamaat al Fuqua compound down. Susan Fanger remains off camera because she has been warned that Sheikh Jilani has a contract out on her life. At that point, the, the governor wanted to know what was going on. He was pretty upset about the fact that we have terrorists in Colorado. And I have to respect the man because we got together, the FBI was there, my director and I were there. That was Governor Roy Romer. Governor Romer said, I don't want terrorists here in Colorado. What are you going to do about it? And he turns to the FBI. And there were two people from the FBI, including the head guy of the Denver office. And the Denver office said, we're pulling out. We can't do anything. We've got word from Washington that we're not going to get involved in this. So uh, they left the room. 
and the governor was really upset. After the FBI pulled out of the investigation, the state of Colorado was left on its own to uproot the Jamaat Afruka terrorist camp. The governor said, anything you need, just ask for it. So I said, well, I, I need to carry a gun. This is a dangerous group. I said, I have to keep this really secret. I went to the grand jury, the state grand jury, presented all of this evidence. At the end of the grand jury, they gave uh, the indictments handed down. And at that point, the prosecutor helped me to put together a 64-man law enforcement team from various jurisdictions. And we went up and we raided the place. We found arms. So we, took, we had a mine inspector lined up. We had bomb experts lined up because we suspected of all these things we'd be finding there. And sure enough, we found a large cache of weapons. 5,000 rounds of Chinese ammunition, rifles, uh, all kinds of weapons, knives, uh, bows and arrows, everything you could think of. Okay, guns, of course, uh, rifles of all kinds, and including some illegal weapons. If Jamaat al fuqur was listed as a foreign terrorist organization, uh, the law enforcement authorities in this country will have no trouble rolling them up, shutting them down, deporting those who should be deported, seizing their assets, seizing their, their property, seizing their uh, uh, weapons or anything else. If, it's, uh, if, if they uh, make it onto that list of foreign terrorist organizations, this problem can be cleaned up very quickly. They're still there because the U.S. government allows them to be there. Because there's either indecision or there are people within the United States government who are manipulating uh, prosecutors to prevent prosecutors from actually going after these organizations.